In this video, we're going to explain a couple of important settings for better performance on Etheris X2. One thing to keep in mind is that you can always check the Etheris X2's compatibility list to check whether or not a game benefits from certain settings on different devices. So first of all, make sure your settings are set to default. In order to reset your settings, go to App Settings, tap the Kebab menu on the upper right corner and select Reset to Optimal Settings. Now go ahead and and run your game. What we want to do basically is to mess with a few settings that can increase the frame rate in different games. First of all, you want to turn on the status indicator in order to monitor the performance. To do that, pause the game, tap the gear icon and scroll down the general tab below the on-screen display section and enable show FPS and show speed. As you can see, the speed of the game is about 68%. Now let's increase it by tweaking the settings. The first and most important setting that is always a go-to for almost everybody is EE cycle rate. And for low-end devices, most of the time, the lower the number of EE cycle rate, the better the results. Minus one is a good starting point for testing. As you can see, the performance is a little bit improved. So let's go lower and test minus two and three. After testing these options, it was clear that the game would run smoother with the EE cycle rate of minus three. But still, there is room for further performance improvement. Next important option for tweaking is EE cycle skip. I tried mild, moderate, and maximum, and to be honest, a lot of games like God of War 1 and 2 benefit a lot from this option. So what happened to my game was on the papers, setting the cycle skip to maximum caused the game to run full speed, but unfortunately, it seems as though nothing changed, and I even felt that the game was running slower, so I changed the setting back to normal. Remember that it is your experience that matters, not the numbers. And after tweaking a setting, if it does not affect your performance, then revert it back to normal. So in conclusion, underclocking should be the first thing that comes to your mind, especially if you have a low-end device like me. So after this, I tweaked other important settings. Some of them need a little bit of explanation. So here we go. First up, let's start with the graphics tab settings. Number one is GPU renderer. Depending on your device, some games might benefit from Vulkan renderer. For example, in my case, Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal ran a little bit better with the Vulkan set as the GPU renderer. Number two, the resolution scale. Most of the time, lowering the resolution helps with performance in low-end devices, so keep that in mind. Number three is enabling multi-threaded V1. And lastly, in the graphics tab, changing the hardware download mode to disable readbacks might help with performance. Now remember you can enable widescreen patches to automatically apply 16 by 9 widescreen patch in the games that support it. So let's go to the audio tab. There's one important setting called synchronization mode. Changing this to async mix is a good option for fixing some audio problems and even performance. Now let's get to the advanced tab. There are three options that enabling them could improve performance. One is GPU palette conversion, two is skip presenting duplicate frames, and three is threaded presentation which only works with Vulkan renderer. There are also other settings that you can tweak, but for the sake of the time, I will not mention them. You can just play around with them and see which one works. So I played around with all these settings and none of them worked. So basically this was all I could get. And I guess um, beggars can be choosers, which is... Uh, sad. 